Okay guys, here is class number one and what I want to do here real quick is show you how to use HP tuners and try to show you how I brush up on a very close to stock pickup truck tune all in one. So I'm assuming that you guys already have HP tuners or you're interested in getting it. So we'll just start from the basics and we'll say that it is a three part system. It is a hardware cable that does your licensing and flashing and data logging and then it is the editor and the scanner which you can see is the editor is here and the scanner is here and basically this is for data logging and doing you can force some things like depending on the vehicle fans and what gear you're in and to test things or help you with dyno tuning and other things we'll go over some of that maybe and the editor is what you connect to the computer and you download the tune with and you do all the editing of the tune file and reflash with that so with that said, I did a 2006 pickup truck the other day. His name was Ryan Davis, and I fixed this thing up, and it took like one flash, and then I just did another one just for fun, but it, it took almost nothing to clean it up. So what I'm going to do is explain real quick how all that works and when, you know, special practices and things you should, you know, do on the way to, you know, help yourself out so you don't get screwed. So... First thing you should do is, I don't have a vehicle to connect to, so you're going to have to imagine how this works. You hit read VCM, you connect to the truck, this pickup truck, you key on, give it two seconds or so, and hit begin. And when it does, it'll connect and it'll say 2000 Silverado, blah, 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 and it'll start downloading everything. Now, when that finishes, it's going to ask you if you want to license the vehicle. You don't have to license it. You can save the file and look over everything. Uh, one of the quickest things you can run out of credits and money quick is use all your license files. Uh, you can just check out the car, you can always license it later, so just be careful what you license. Just pay attention to that. But So what I will do quick is just open up the downloaded file and easy way to do that is I can just actually drag and drop it in here. And I have here his downloaded file. Now the first thing you want to do, like I have here, this one says tune number one. The first thing that you want to do when you download your stock truck or someone else's or your friends is you want to go to save as and you want to go right away, make a new file and say, hopefully I don't break anything. And then you can even do the date too. We can go down here, we can check the date, 11, 29, 16. So, the stock download file you haven't touched, which is perfect. You don't want to screw anything up. In case shit happens, you can always go back and uh, put, load that file or load parts of that file, you know, just to make sure nothing is messed up. So, now that we have, hopefully I don't break anything open, the stock file is safe. Trust me, even... Every day you mess with something, you might want to make a file every day and be descriptive, like if the car won't idle right or some other things, but it might it might bite you one day when you change one thing and you can't leave a gas station. It's happened to us before. So anyway, first things you'll take note of is a funny thing with 2500 ECUs. A lot of you know the things are screwed up, but first thing you should realize is this is an emissions computer and it's trying to run an air fuel of 14.7 all the time basically so what it's doing is you'll see like when you data log the air fuel trims will constantly trim to try to get it a 14.7 air fuel and what's really interesting about these trucks is all GM basically all of these cars have what's called a power enrichment PE throttle and an EQ ratio so the car is just trying to be emissions compliant all the time so when you roll into the throttle a certain amount, which is right here, the PE commanded, like this, think of this as a nitrous system. When it hits this amount of throttle, it enables a certain amount of fuel for wide open fueling. And I'll explain that quick in a data log. We'll open up uh, Ryan's stock data log file here, stock pull. Now you're gonna see something really interesting here. As Ignore the Y band for now, but right here on commanded air fuel, it says 14.6. Now, here's something funny with these stock pickup trucks. This is normal, you know, 14.6, 14.6. You can see the O2 trims 
trimming fuel while I'm just cruising up through the gears. And then when I floor it here, check this out. Commanded air fuel stays at 14.7. It never commands like power enrichment is what we would call it. So it never goes into PE mode. So it never fuels to make power. And this makes these things drive like junk. You roll into the pedal and they just have no power. And more importantly, they don't make any power. So the first thing we look at on the stock tune file is it has 90% throttle, which is pretty high. I don't know why GM engineers did this. I'm sure there's a good reason or there's no good reason. And check this out. There's a delay at 5,500 RPM, 60 seconds. So you have to be flooring it over 90% throttle, over 5,500 RPM for over 60 seconds, and then power enrichment will come on, which is, is basically effectively disabling it. It's never coming on. It's never turning on. So in these trucks, it's really fun to tune these because you can make huge power gains with very little effort. And they drive 10 times better, obviously. And the first thing you're going to look at is this is the EQ ratio. This is basically a multiplier. So really simple way to explain that is if I open up... Yeah, I'm not interested. I want to use the calculator. Ta-da! Say we have the 14.7 stoic air fuel, stotch, stoic, stoic, anyway, and we are going to see 1.1, 1.2. If we divide by 1.2, I did 1.0, oh, 1.2, we get a 12.2 air fuel, so then it's going to command a 12.2. So after that stock pull where it made dismal power and everything was kind of junky, I think it made 238 to the tire. I went in and I first couple things I do is I go right to the PE table because these 2500s are always jacked and you'll notice on a lot of tables uh, in Spark and a bunch of things there's a high and a low octane and in the shift tables there's all sorts of different things inside the stock computer you're gonna want to do what we say unify all the tables because for whatever reason it can switch back and forth in between these you just want it to make safest repeatable power so real quick way to fix up these trucks and pretty much all other trucks is to you would go right in and you can type in 50 and hit enter this doesn't always work but you can click in the corner or you can highlight a certain amount and you can type in you can use the equals sign up here this is just another way to some values they won't let you a lot of times you'll see me to do this quick as possible I'll click in the corner and I'll type in like 50 and it makes the whole table 50 and what I mean by that doesn't always work is some of the tables you'll type in 50 and they'll all stay the same the values won't change you actually have to use the the math bar up here to make your changes so now that PE is set to come on at 50% throttle hot or cold we want to go into the EQ PE enrichment so this is the fuel multiplier so we're gonna type in 1.2 as a good start again I clicked in the corner typed in 1.2 it made all of them 1.2. So we're going to go to ramp in and we're just going to make it the f as fast as possible. Why not? And then for here, for delay, you pretty much don't want any delay. So you can zero those. And then what you would do is you would save this and you want to make sure again that you're saving it as not your stock download file. Hopefully I don't break anything. Dot HPT. <laughs> and when you flash this in, you go here, write calibration, hit begin. It writes all this into the stock computer again, obviously. You key back on and off and cycle everything. And, and when I fired it up to make another dyno pull, we'll go open up the, another log file. Pull number two. We went stock pull made 238 horsepower. And you can see with this pull number two, it made 285. And the big key here to fixing that was, see right here? 50% throttle, 22%, 50%, commanded air fuel, 1245. So it splashed some fuel in during the pull, amazingly enough. Ta-da! All the way out. And then when you lift, boop, command, it goes back to 14.7. So just that fuel change fixed it up. And then what you're going to want to see is, the I don't have the wideband here connected. This is just, that's why it stays 1288. But when you're tuning with a wideband, which is 
absolutely what you should do <laughs> unless you can't uh, it's definitely advised you should be using it and then what you obviously want to see is the commanded here matching what's coming out of the tailpipe so then you make your car safe and basically like a general rule of thumb with like an LS motor if it's like a mild truck or a car or anything else um, low 12 air fuel is fine because making these things a high 12 air fuel doesn't make any power and making them an 11.8 really doesn't make any power so a mid 12 to low 12 usually you know feels the best and is nice and safe and then usually when you hit it down low here you want to have a little bit less ignition in it and put like 15 to 18 in here if it's a less if it's a if it's an inefficient motor it'll take more ignition if it's ve if it's more efficient it'll take less ignition i think that's a misconception some people have where they build a really efficient motor they think they can get a lot of ignition in it and that's the opposite case sometimes so just a general rule of thumb is like 15 to 18 in the mid range and then up to 22 usually near red line uh, some of these cars will take like 26, 28, 29 up top. Uh, you, you know, it's hard to tell when you're street tuning this thing, but if it were on a dyno, you would see, you know, you would keep, if it falls over at like 5,000 and you trickle in some more ignition as you go up, you would definitely see a little bit better power. And one thing I'm looking at here over the data log is where the ignition is going in. Is if we look on the main spark table, now you'll notice this sometimes if you lose your histogram here you can see uh, the ignition amount on the data log and you can also see uh, what I would also advise you guys to do sorry let me backpedal here and say when you're going to scan your vehicle you should use one of my configs I use this one called G8 config it has like pretty much everything you're gonna need to do tuning I mean you can add and subtract things but the stock ones pretty bare so you should use this one it'll tell you what gear the trans is in the temp and a lot of other uh, special things for like tuning like cylinder air and that brings us to our next thing is how do I get how do I know how much timing the car is gonna run and that's a good question it, it uses a reference of cylinder air and RPM on the time on the timing chart so you can see like right here if I go up here you can see my cylinder air here 76 and 74 ish here and also if you load the histogram here for the first one of my table I'll give you if it doesn't show up you can right click and hit load all data so what happens here is it shows you this is the spark table inside the stock computer and if you go through here and you can see when you floor it it pretty much starts out at 68 so right when you get into the pedal it jumps right up to about 68 and tops out about 84 so in this range if you open up the stock tune and go to your spark table so in that 68 to 84 range, this is where the car is basically wide open. So this is where you would make your adjustments. And then also what you do is if you make an adjustment to this area in the middle, you would highlight the whole table and hit copy. And then you go to the low octane table and paste it in. You want to make sure the tables have, you know, are unified. So you would paste that guy in, you would make the tables the same. And you can save it and flash it and then back to back runs. What did this guy have in here? Do do do. We will see. And then I think I added, I did a little bit of fuel change. Let me open up another log. This one, 296. Made slightly more. I might have messed with the fuel or ignition. Looks like I splashed a tiny bit of ignition in it. Yeah, down low I have 15, 18, and then it started falling over, so I started s splashing it in there, 24, 25 up top, and it carried good power to like 60, 5,800, 62,000, 6,200, sorry. And this truck did pretty good because it had a mild cam in it, so it picked up a lot to the tire because the stock tune is pretty terrible also you can see here where I you know splashed a little bit of ignition in there made the tables a little smoother and as you can see just from those changes that's it it made a huge difference and then also what I like to do when I fix the fueling because those cars have jacked fueling is I go into like inlet temp spark table and what I like to do here is basically I'll zero the whole thing out first and you can do that by up top here and 
classically for like a streetcar in this area, when they get to like 120, 130 degrees, you want to start pulling out a degree or two. So you can highlight this whole area. Again, like using the math bar here, it's pretty nice. You can go like this and you can hit equals. And then you're saying, how do I make, how do I easily like split this table up and make it negative two or five? You can just keep leaving this negative one and you can hit plus. It'll go negative two. And then you go back farther again, negative, negative, and then by 150, it's pulling five degrees. Um, you're fine. If you have five degrees, too much ignition in your car, you got other <laughs> issues to worry about. And for engine coolant temp, this is interesting too. I think this is for lighting off the catalytic converter or some other stuff. You can see, it's interesting. When you start opening a bunch of tunes, you'll notice even if they're totally stock, sometimes they're totally whacked. You're like, what the hell is going on? It's adding or subtracting strange things. This is another one of those things I zero the whole damn thing out. Because if you want, if the car, if you're going to be flooring it, you know, you want it to be safe and you want it to do what you're telling it to do, you need to get rid of variables like this. This is why sometimes when you data log, say you have, say you're sure you have 26 degrees, 24 degrees in it, and on your data log you're seeing 14 or 36 it's it's the stuff like this that's throwing you off and getting these fundamentals down pat is pretty important because once you have a supercharger or a blower or something you don't want 10 degrees sneaking in and out of the car it could be catastrophic so you want to zero this guy out too uh, see this was one of those that won't zero so you go up here in the corner zero that thing out and then in classes I've had people ask about the multipliers the, the multipliers are for the base so you could zero these out if you want, but the it's multiplying by zero in this case here, and it's multiplying by, you know, whatever's coming out of it here too. So you can pretty much leave those go. And then from there, that's pretty much it. Like that's, that's the general gist of it using the program. And then uh, make sure to save new files every time don't save over your downloaded file <laughs> that's a surefire way to get yourself in trouble but you can see how this car had you know definitely a, a wide open fuel problem and just by fixing that it picked up tons and tons of power and the guy obviously if you drove this thing it, it picked up almost what did it go from 238 to 260 horsepower nearly to the tire like 55 in some spots tons of torque down low and the, the really important thing is sometimes you'll only make about 10 horsepower, but what you'll gain in when you're having that PE come in correctly, that power enrichment, when you roll into the pedal, you're going to get power instead of like uh, this anemic feeling. The car doesn't want to go anywhere. What's nice is the, the fueling kicks in and it just whoop, it just takes off nice. So that is a quick, this is my first screen cap. So we're going to see how it turns out. I'm going to upload this for you guys that were in the class, and everyone's going to give us feedback. We'll see how it goes, but that's the general gist of how to use HP tuners real quick and how I fixed the tune-up and how I looked at the logs to, you know, figure out what I was doing and the spark and fuel, and that's it. So let us know how what you think and how it turns out, and I guess I'll see how it turns out too.